Um, just in a short while, we're going to be joined virtually from Haiti by Jean-Martin Bauer, the uh, WFP's country director in Haiti. He will brief us on the current uh, tragic food security situation in Haiti. Uh, this morning, the Secretary General spoke at the General Assembly event commemorating the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade, uh, and that day took, was on Saturday. The Secretary General said that the history of racialized chattel slavery is a history of suffering, crime, violence, and exploitation, but he added it is also a history of awe-inspiring courage that shows human beings at their best, starting with enslaved people who rose up against impossible odds and extending to the abolitionists who spoke out against this atrocious crime. Mr. Guterres said it is incumbent of all of us to fight slavery's legacy of racism. Governments everywhere should introduce lessons into school curricula on the causes, manifestation, and far-reaching consequences of the transatlantic slave trade. We must learn and teach the horrific history of slavery, he said. Turning to Syria, uh, since last month's earthquake, more than 1,070 trucks have crossed into the northwest of the country from southern Turkey, carrying aid provided by seven UN agencies. UN staff have now completed uh, 37 cross-border missions into the northwest since the first agency visit to Idlib on the 14th of February. In the government-held areas of Syria, we and our humanitarian partners continue to help remove debris. We also provided technical support to committees assessing the damage in the governance of Idlib, Aleppo, and Latakia. So far, the United Nations and our partners have carried out safely assessment or nearly 3,700 schools and set up eight temporary learning spaces in shelters and community centers. And we and our uh, partners have also provided 185,000 ready-to-eat meals and 785,000 hot meals to people affected by the earthquake. Uh, turning to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, our humanitarian colleagues there are telling us there's a cholera outbreak now in North Kivu province. They say areas of Goma, uh, Kerisimbi, Masasi, and Yarogongo are particularly impacted by this outbreak. Health authorities have registered 1,800 confirmed and suspected cases between the 13th and 19th of March. That's compared to 1,000 cases the previous week. In total, 6,200 cases of cholera have been registered between the beginning of the year and last week. The affected areas have, lost, have host over one million internally displaced people with precarious living conditions, many in displacement sites. We're, of course, concerned that people's limited access to fresh water and inadequate hygiene conditions is facilitating the spread of this disease. We, along with our partners, continue to support cholera treatment centers. However, resources are limited, and the situation may deteriorate further without additional funding to scale up the response. Turning to South Sudan, our peacekeeping mission there, uh, UNMIS is increasing its presence in conflict hotspots following a spate of attacks on humanitarian convoys in the last week in the greater Jongle area. The mission is collaborating with the World Food Program to improve security around the movement of convoys across the country. The uh, peacekeeping mission continues to engage with the government, with state officials and other leaders to prevent any further escalation of tensions. It appeals to national and community leaders to exercise restraint and commit to peace and dialogue as this violence risks jeopardizing the stability of the region and provoking retaliatory attacks. Also, the mission is supporting the government in conducting dialogue in Jongle State and Greater Pibo Administrative Area to address intercommunal violence affecting civilians in Akobo, Uror, and Duke counties. A quick update from Libya, where the 5 plus 5 military joint committee met yesterday in Tripoli with a group of eastern, western, and southern military and security commanders under the auspices of Abdullahi Batili, the UN's uh, head of mission there, uh, just to underscore that this is the first inclusive meeting inside of Libya in over in a decade. The aim of the meeting was to follow up on participants' commitments during the meeting in Tunisia earlier this month to work together to create conducive conditions for the elections this year. Mr. Batili called on all leaders in the East, West, and South to support consolidating peace in Libya. And the 10th Asia-Pacific Forum on Sustainable Development opened in Bangkok in Thailand today with a call for countries to make radical changes as development gains in the region have never been at such risks of being swept away by overlapping and intensifying crises. 
Our colleagues say that this region, the cost of living crisis, has deprived 400 million people of safe and nutritious food. Climate-related catastrophes coupled with biodiversity loss, pollution, are also causing immense hardship and suffering. The forum is organized by the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific and will continue until Thursday this week. Um, two members of the Commonwealth of Nations have paid their dues in full to the United Nations today. Uh, one is an African nation that joined the Commonwealth um, on UN Day in 1964, and the other is a Caribbean country that joined the Commonwealth in February of 1979. Uh, both nations joined the UN in those same years. Any guess on those two countries? No, Zambia and St. Lucia, and we thank them both. But at least you tried to play, James, so if you have a question. Okay. Um, <laughs> President case, Putin yeah. saying that nuclear weapons are going to be based in Belarus. What's the Secretary General's reaction? Well, we've obviously uh, seen those, uh, seen those, um, those press uh, reports. Um, and I can tell you that, obviously, we're concerned about uh, the general state of um, the general state of tensions around nuclear weapons uh, that we're seeing uh, recently, which is uh, very concerning. And it also serves as a reminder for every member state to uphold its responsibility of the, under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. And one more, the, you're obviously aware of the big protests by Israelis currently. Um, how concerned is the Secretary General about that in a place where the UN clearly is vital for diplomacy? We're obviously uh, watching uh, the developments uh, that are going on in Israel internally very closely. Uh, and I think, as we would anywhere else, a reminder uh, that people have a right to demonstrate peacefully um, and that demonstrations should be done uh, peacefully. Madame, and then we'll go. Talking about the right of demonstrating peacefully, the Council of Europe, Reporter Without Border, Amnesty International, and the Commissioner for Human Rights are concerned about the excessive use of force against demonstrators in France, where a second person is in a coma. Does the UN believe it is appropriate for a country that is a permanent member of the Security Council to behave that way? Our reaction is the same everywhere, is that people have a right to demonstrate peacefully. Security forces need to be there to protect that right to demonstrate peacefully, whether it's happening in France, in Israel, or anywhere else. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Ukraine calls for convening the UN Security Council uh, on the statement of Russian President Putin about the deployment uh, of nuclear weapons in Belarus. Do you have any details uh, about the Security Council meeting? No, my understanding is it would happen this week, but that's a question, obviously, for, uh, for the Security Council. Deji and then Yvonne. A quick follow-up on that issue. Uh, if there would be a, like you said, if there would be a, a Security Council meeting this week, who would, who would be the briefer from the Security Council? Well, let's see if they ask for a briefer. Uh, OK. Uh, okay, so so my question, it's also concerning nuclear, actually. Uh, we know that Mr. Grossi of IAEA this, visited Ukraine and met with uh, President Zelensky. Uh, I just want to know, is there any progress or development of the, the establishment of the protection zone of Zaporizhia nuclear power plant? Uh, nothing that I can report to, but I would encourage you to also ask the IAEA. And, and also, uh, on, on, on another issue, the Black Sea Green Initiative, uh, is, is is the UN still engaging with Russia to to talk about the well, the, I mean, the, the Russian the, fertilizer the, food exportation? The grain initiative continues uh, to work. There were two ships that left today. I think one for Bangladesh, one for China. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's moving along and uh, just underscores the our continued attachment to it. And it's going on with uh, the cooperation, obviously, of, of Ukraine and the Russian Federation, assisted by Turkey and as well as ourselves. Okay. Uh, another another thing. Uh, this this afternoon, the Security Council would uh, vote on the draft resolution about the Nord Stream uh, pipeline issue. 
has the, the, the position of the UN changed since last um, Security Council meeting on this? No. Nope. Uh, so I mean, I, I would refer you to what I think Rosemary DiCarlo briefed on February 21st, uh, and she laid out our, our position. The, uh, in that briefing, Ms. DiCarlo actually didn't even said anything about concerning this thing. Um, uh, I mean, I, I think she... She didn't. There are two concerns. One, one is Russian Federation expressed their concern, and second, they urged the concerned party to, to restrain, to, to keep, keep maximum restraint, something like that. There's no concerning from, from her. Uh, if the draft resolution passed, uh, or was adopted, uh, if the, sorry, if the draft resolution were adopted, uh, certainly there, there, were, there were paragraphs about concerning the condemn and, and other things. Would, would the Secretary change its out, uh, position? Well, I mean, let me put it this way. I, I, I don't have tarot cards. I don't know what the Security Council will do. The only thing I can tell you is that as in any situation, if the Security Council gives the Secretary General a mandate, the Secretary General acts on that mandate. Yvonne. Um, thank you, Steph. So last week, the Secretary General was in Europe to speak to European leaders. And according to reporting by the South China Morning Post, he, uh, in the discussions, warned EU leaders not to isolate China. Do you have any more details about that? And no, in I mean, what context I think this, this falls under the, the, the Secretary General's uh, <laughs> concerns that he's been voicing now for some time about a decoupling, right, of the Western economy, so to speak, and the Chinese uh, economy, which from his standpoint would not be a positive thing um, for the world as a whole. And I think that, that remains his, his position. Just that it wasn't in the readout that you sent out. So do you have any further details? No, I don't. Sent? I mean, I, obviously, this was a, uh, I think, very useful private lunch uh, for the Secretary General and, and European leaders. We issued the readout that we did. And on this particular issue, I think it's, uh, I'm just re restating what the Secretary General's position is, uh, and I think it was most likely reflected in the discussions at lunch. Can I ask another question? Of course you <laughs> okay. may. All right, so um, Secretary General is, is clearly seen as a champion of democratic values. Uh, given that the uh, President of Taiwan, Tsai Ing-wen, is in the US this week, will come to New York later in the week, and is the, the leader of what's considered Asia's leading democracy. Does the Secretary General have any message for her? The, the Secretary General's uh, position on China is guided uh, by the relevant General Assembly resolution on the One China policy. But, sorry, I'm not asking about China. No, no, I, I understand, Taiwan and that's, and that's, the, answer, that's, that's the answer. Value. That's the answer to your okay, question. One other question then. Um, no message for, for President Tsai Ing-wen, but what about the Taiwanese citizens, the passport holders who are not even allowed into this building to take a tour? Does the Secretary General have anything to say to them? The, the, the policy of the UN is that uh, the premises of UN headquarters are open to people with identifications uh, of member states of, this, of the UN. Stefano. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, one is a follow-up on the um, visit that the um, Secretary General did in Europe recently. Um, uh, did he speak with the European leaders about the um, migrants issue from the North Africa? I don't listen. I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't have a chance to have an in-depth conversation with him uh, since I was away and he was away. But this is an issue that is very close to, to his heart, and I think he's been very, very vocal. And then I have a follow-up on the North Stream. I understand that you clearly say the position is the one that De Carlo expressed uh, a month ago. Um, but because that resolution asked for um, um, the involvement of the UN for the investigation, and De Carlo, if, I, if I'm correct, uh, if I remember well, she uh, said to, we, we had to wait for uh, the investigation, I assume she was, uh, she was talking about the Danish, Swedish, and German, and then we, we, we can take, uh, uh, you know, we can take a decision. If the Security Council actually passed the resolution, what you're saying here is that the UN will be ready to start uh, the investigation itself? What, what I'm saying to you, 
is that if there is a resolution of the Security Council asking the Secretary General to do something, the Secretary General does that thing. Full stop. That's it, right? But so if, it, if, if the Security Council passes a resolution asking the Secretary General to do something, he will do that thing. Let's go to keep going on the first round. Yes, Sir Alan. Thank you, Stefan. I have a short question regarding the grain deal, uh, particularly regarding the, the language the UN is using uh, concerning the first part of the grain de deal, calling it uh, Black Sea Grain Initiative. As you remember, uh, uh, this first part uh, con uh, contains the third paragraph if I'm not mistaken, which stipulates also the fertilizers, that the uh, facilitation uh, to the exports of the grain, foodstuffs, and uh, fertilizers as well, uh, including ammonia from Russia. So my question is regarding the language. Why don't you use the, the term kind of a, I don't know, b b Black Sea grain and fertilizers uh, deal? Because well, that might entail I, among I, I, our readers the, the impression that only the memorandum contains this uh, the, the stipulation regarding the, the, let, the fertilizer. Let me, uh, I, I want to be as clear as possible to help your, your, your readers. Uh, there is the Black Sea Grain mm -hmm. Initiative, right, uh, which discusses ammonia as well, which is a critical component of, of fertilizers. And there's a, a memorandum of understanding. Uh, the Secretary General's team are pushing on all fronts to make sure that everything that was signed and agreed to last year is fully implemented. As we've said repeatedly, especially on the issue of fertilizer, we don't hold the levers of power, right? Uh, that has to do with discussions that we keep having uh, with, private in with the, the private sector, and with uh, the European Union, with the UK, and with the, with the US to try to facilitate uh, that trade. The issue of the ammonia pipeline is also very important, and we're continuing our discussions uh, with that. What we want to see is a full implementation of the Black Sea Grain Initiative, as it's officially called, as well as the Memorandum of Understanding on uh, Fertilizers. Yes, sir, and then we'll go to the back. Sorry. There's another question about the Russian crisis. Uh, Russia wants to recruit another four 100,000 contract soldiers to join its troops for the war against Ukraine. Uh, Russian regions have received appropriate uh, instructions. Do you have any comments on that? Well, uh, I have no particular comment on that. Our, our, what we would like to see is an end to this war in Ukraine. Uh, we would want to see a just peace based on the UN Charter uh, based on relevant uh, General, General Assembly uh, resolution, based on international law. That's what we would like to see. Uh, let's go to the back. Yep. Yeah. Uh, your microphone, please. Yeah, on the question on the Belarus issue, you had said that something like you could expect or one could expect to see something this week. Could you be a bit more specific on what one can expect? No, what I, the two, what, what I said in terms of, uh, of, and what I want to reiterate on, in terms of our position on, uh, on the reports that we've seen uh, of nuclear weapons and, and Belarus, that current nuclear risks are alarmingly high, right? And all actions that could lead to miscalculation or escalation with catastrophic consequences must be avoided. All states' parties, that's nuclear weapon states and non-nuclear weapon states, must strictly adhere to the commitments and obligations they've assumed under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Nuclear Treaty. In terms of a Security Council resolution, uh, excuse me, in terms of a Security Council meeting, that's a question uh, you need to ask uh, the presidency because it's up to them to schedule it. Mr. Bays. Yeah, sorry, I, I want to just pick up on Yvonne's questions about Taiwan because it's s several years since I asked you about Taiwan um, uh, citizens coming into this building and you seem to have clarified the position a little bit more than last yeah. time you were going to seek clarification for me. So l let me just dig a bit further. Um, Taiwan citizens used to be allowed into this building and they're not allowed now. How did that change? I don't know when or when that happened. What I can tell you is that, as far as I know, is that to come into this building, you need to show 
a government-issued ID from a member state of the United Nations. And what's the authority for that? Was that a GGA resolution? I, or, I don't know. Or is it just a decision of the Secretary let, General? Let me, let me um, If you could try and yeah, find yeah. out, because yeah. uh, also Kosovo passports. There are Kosovo passport holders, including senior Kosovo officials who brief the Security Council. They're not mem members of the United Nations. How are they allowed to But they have, they've come uh, also on the fact that it is an issue that's before the Security Council. But these, I mean, let, let, it seems let to me, me check. I mean, yeah. it seems to me all of these people are citizens of the world. Yeah. and. I wouldn't have thought that the Secretary General is someone who wants to, 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 to I, I practice think, discrimination. I, I, no, I, I, and I don't think this policy, uh, I think this policy has been in, in, in place for quite some number of years. But I will get back to you, and if I've misspoken, Farhan will be here tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Deji, and then uh, Ibtissam, and then we'll go to Abdul Hamid. Uh, I have a couple of other questions. Um, so when we're talking about Taiwan, we're talking about China, right? Is that a question or a statement? No, I, I'm, I'm just, just saying because when, uh, uh, when they ask you about, when Yvonne asks you the question on Taiwan, you, you talk about the China policy. Uh, what, what is your question, Deji? Uh, for UN, Taiwan is part of China or not? Our position on China is guided by the General Assembly resolution passed in 72, 73 on the one China policy. Okay. Um, so I, I'll give you a simple question. Uh, when we talk, we're, we're talking about. When we're talking about the three pillars of United Nations, what are the three pillars? Is this a quiz? It's, it's, it, I mean, what's, you, what's that? What's do, that? Do, if you don't, yeah. you've been covering it's, the UN for a long time. <laughs> you have an SDG pin here. Yeah. I can ask you what the 17 goals are. Oh, God, I know uh, the six. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, um, so they are human what, what rights, peace and security and development. Yeah. There's no democracy. Do you want to add democracy in that? Deji, we're not going to rewrite uh, the, UN, uh, the UN Charter. Uh, I think the issue of self-determination and democracy are very important to the UN's work. Okay, uh, one last question. Hopefully today you didn't have any gummy. So I asked you this question two weeks ago. Uh, what's the position of the United Nations on the use of a cannibal, a cannabis? Uh, I think from what I understand it is guided by the International uh, Narcotics Control Board. Uh, Ibtissam. Um, yeah, I, I wish I had had one this morning, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Or maybe you should, I should give them to all of you. That would be better for me. If to some. Uh, so I, I have just a follow up on uh, James. But, uh, but in general, so, so people who, are, let's say, live in the US and are undocumented, uh, they will not be able to. I mean, isn't the UN, um, if we go back to the charters, it says we the people. So it's. You, 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 you need to show a government uh, issued idea. I understand idea. that. I know that. Uh, but, uh, but I'm just wondering about the principle of showing, um, uh, I mean, the UN, it's supposed to be, yes, it's a member state uh, organization. We understand that. But it also says that it's um, an organization that's supposed to represent all the people in the world. So I'm just wondering. What is behind the fact that if you are, let's say, undocumented, and there's about 11 million people in this country who yeah. are undocumented, and it is, it is, uh, and it they is are a not allowed to enter it, it this is, it is, a, it is a challenge. Undocumented people are challenged in many parts of the world. Uh, there are uh, places that even to undocumented people can have access to some sort of. I mean, in some sort of ID. I mean, I know in this country, you know, there's been a debate about undocumented aliens being able to have a driver's license. The point is, as in many places, for security reasons, you need to show some form of identification to come into this building. And we're not the only place in the world to ask for government issued ID. James, I'm not going to go to you right now. Uh, Abdel Hamid. During the night of Sunday, the settlers set on fire the house of Ahmed Maher Awashra in the village of Sinjin. The people of the village ran to the house and managed to get the family out. The father, Ahmed, managed also to get his children out. If it, if it didn't happen that the uh, village people saved that family, another Dawabsha family will, be, uh, will perish. Yet this incident had not uh, shown on the uh, on the radar of Mr. Thor Winston. Why is that? I, I don't know 
whether or not it was on his, uh, on his radar, uh, what I can tell you is that we continue to be very concerned about the violence uh, that we're seeing in the occupied West Bank, and that is an issue Mr. Venislan has consistently brought up uh, with the Israeli authorities and others. Does that, uh, th this kind of incident, could it be discover, uh, described as a terrorist uh, act? I, I don't have the details of the incident. The f this is the first I'm hearing of it, uh, but I would encourage you to reach out to Mr. Venislan's office. Okay. Uh, we shall go to our to, James. Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Just on on the Taiwan issue, I mean, people from Taiwan do have government issued IDs, just not from a member state. Could you please find the authority that this rule is based yeah, on, please, or if it's just the Secretary General I I decision, oh, because yeah. then that would I, be him discriminating. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Celia, and then we'll go to Jean Martin, who I think has been very patient in Haiti. Some years ago, we tried, the journalists, we tried to have journalists from Taiwan here in that building, and we could not because China said no. Uh, uh, what is, what is, I mean, you're making a is, statement, we're here to no, ask questions. So, what no, is your I question? Want, I want to know is China willing, uh, running the UN? I think this is one of the most ridiculous questions no, I've heard today. Okay, um, Jean-Martin Bauer, 